Hi folks, this story is coming to you from my second book, Stones and Stories. It's called Absolute Signs of Spring. And we all looking for those right now. When I was a kid, I knew spring was coming when I got the call from Sag Sagadoc Fertilizer. They were putting together their bone meal bagging boys and Pat in the office wanted to know if I needed a little extra spending money. Of course, the answer was always yes. So Dana and I would show up for a series of Saturday mornings and join the crew. Now, the crew was three or four kids supervised by a guy with a forklift and an older guy behind a window. We boys worked on the dusty side. Bone meal was a specialty product produced and bagged right there in Bowdenham, Maine, before there was a DEP and before any of the rest of us knew that chewing dust might be bad for about the consistency of flour, with an occasional lump, bump, or chip, bone meal was packaged in five and ten pound bags and was sworn by and sought after by professional arborists and botanists all over the world. I don't think you can buy that anymore. Not from Bowdoin anyway. Our job was to trip a lever, watch the stuff fill the bag, and when the poundage was reached, trip the lever again fold the top over and shove the bag down a line where another less dusty, older kid stapled and stacked the bags a hundred to a pallet. Two or three hours on the bottom end of a bagger was enough to change the complexion of even the brightest fair-haired boys. Pretty soon we were covered with the dust, not even a high-pressure air compressor would blow off. I got the job because my grandfather worked for the company. Dana was hired because his dad was management. Looking back on it now, I'm not sure there were there was ever lots of competition for the job, but the spending money was top dollar. March will also bring out Dave Berry, dotting over what was left of the snowbanks in town together as maple saps. Berry was a house builder by trade, but when spring came, he turned into a sapper. Overnight, he had buckets hanging off most of the roadside maples around town, and every afternoon, if the weather was just so, the buckets would be chug-a-lug chug full of chilled sap. Barry had this old fire truck tank he used to haul around on a flatbed, gathering the sap for his boilers. I'll tell you now, I drank out of more than one of those buckets. If you have never chugged a cup of maple sap, you have missed an original taste of me. That was one sweet operation. Barry had pine and spruce slab wood from a couple local sawmills, and he'd keep that evaporator cherry red for days, turning sap into syrup. Going off the Bay Road, his steam would make a cloud that would, com would compete with local late season snowstorms, and the smell was sublime. I used to conjure excuses to track down the mud road leading to his sap house just to go in and say hi, just so I could savor the moment. When I was learning to drive, maybe a quarter of the roads in town were still dirt roads, which means they turned to pure soup come spring. The cutting machine road was best or worst. There was a section in the middle that you couldn't cross on snowshoes come the Ides of March. A buddy of mine, I got so stuck in there one night, we couldn't think that we could ret retrieve the car before the July. I think, but I think a guy with an old Fordson tractor finally came and got us out. But it was the morning after, and we had to confess to our parents. And in a real snow year like this one, we would open spring and close winter with a spring skiing trip to Saddleback. My brothers and buddies piled into one of Hink's old panel trucks, and we headed for the mountain. Rangely Saddleback used to be wicked cold all winter, but come spring, her snows were always, always the deepest, still the whitest, and lasted the longest. Saddleback could put Sugarloaf to shame in those days. Western skiers liked to rave about their deep powder skiing. We Eastern skiers liked to stay quiet spring skiing just because we don't want to share the hill with anybody. 
It wasn't uncommon to ski in a t-shirt and shorts, and at the end of the day, we'd have a snow bum sunburn that could rival any beach burn from July. Snow rustled under your skis, making this gritty sandpaper sound, and you fell at your peril. But it was an exceptional way to bring closure to yet another winter season. Not two nights ago, I looked at Jane and said, we should go and do Saddleback this spring. We could maybe go skiing on a newfound senior discounts. She looked up from her seat on the couch, feet to the fire, smiled that sweet smile of hers and said, I'll see you when you get back. Then she went back to her book. I have to say, I'm still thinking about it. Spring skiing was always a great way to finally get that bone dust out of my hair. Thank you.